How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Spongebob 1000 and in this video we're going to forecast the 2022 hurricane season and predict the amount of storms you should experience as well as the amount of major hurricanes and hurricanes that should form this hurricane season and determine whether or not this hurricane season will be a below average when it comes to the amount of tropical cyclones around average or above average average as we'll take a look at several different factors such as the enzo outlook of sea surf temperatures in the atlantic and many more but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin let's take a look at the enzo outlook over the next several months so i did make a hurricane season forecast video around a month ago but now we have new probabilities with the enzo outlook over the next several months and based on the latest update now we're more likely to, to experience a la nina because in my last video i made before it was almost around 50 50 whether or not we're gonna either experience a neutral phase or a la nina phase during the the middle of the hurricane season but now it's a little bit more likely that we're most like well, that we're gonna experience a la nina during the main months of the hurricane season such as august september october november and extending into june as well where pretty much the entirety of the next few months should be dominated by a la nina pattern however there's still a pretty a relative high chance of a neutral pattern um, also so we can't completely disregard it yet especially since the Enzo outlook definitely varies when it comes to the probability as we head closer and closer into the summer months so we're gonna have to wait and see what changes will be made with the Enzo outlook over the next few months but at this point I think a La Nina is most likely this hurricane season with maybe a possibility of a neutral phase but even if there is a neutral phase it won't be a very it's going to be a very weak neutral phase to a point where it's borderline a la nina phase so i'd still expect more of a la, Ni la nina type conditions this hurricane season and what does this mean for the hurricane season you might be asking well typically during a la nina we see many more tropical cyclones form in the atlantic because there's going to be less Vertical wind shear during a La Nina as well as less atmospheric stability which encourages uh, more of an upward motion in the atmosphere because typically during a La Nina we see the equatorial Pacific sea surf temperatures a lot cooler than average so as a result the air is a lot more stable we see a lot more sinking air in that region and since there isn't a lot of drop there isn't a lot of rising air where the the um, right around the eastern equatorial Pacific that allows for the vertical wind shear in the Atlantic to be, to be a lot lighter because not a lot of air is moving upward aloft into the atmosphere that would move into the Atlantic creating a strong vertical wind shear instead we're seeing sinking air in this region which would encourage tropical cyclone development because all the air that's forced upward aloft into the atmosphere is gonna be able to have an area where that air will sink and that creates less atmospheric stability more divergence in the upper levels of the atmosphere for a higher amount of convection to occur for tropical cyclones for uh, more tropical cyclones to develop in the atlantic so during a la nina we typically see a lot more tropical cyclones as some of the most active hyperactive seasons ha were during a la nina so based on this fact we could assume that more likely than not this hurricane season will experience more tropical cyclones than average um, and comparing that to an el nino we typically see less hurricanes because it's a little bit um the equator pacific is experiencing sea surf temperatures much warmer than average a lot more rising air and that air is going to be forced to move into the atlantic and that will create st a strong amount of wind shear because the winds aloft in the atmosphere moving from a westerly direction will go against what the winds of the trade winds which are coming from an easterly direction and that creates strong vertical wind shear however this won't be the case this hurricane season as a la, la nina type conditions are likely for the atlantic this year now taking a look at the another fact um taking a look at the atlantic multi-decadal oscillation and you're probably wondering what this is it's pretty much a pattern that typically lasts every 60 to 80 years where 
the, typically during um, a positive Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average. And of course, that encourages less atmospheric stability and more tropical cyclones to develop. While during a negative Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, we see sea surface temperatures cooler than average. And, the, and this pattern lasts for a very long time. If we were to take a look at the current index at this point, you see that the, this pattern lasts for a very long time. We see that between 1900 and around 1930, we see that sea surface temperatures are, for the most part, more cooler than average during a negative Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, which means for a 30-year period, tropical cyclone development was less likely. And you, you even see during the other um, during the other phase changes that this um, once you're in a, either a positive or negative phase, it typically lasts for a very long time, around an average of 30 to even 40 years. So, and if we were to take a look at what um, phase we are in right now when it comes to the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, we're in a positive phase and we've been in a positive phase, I'd say since the mid 90s. So we've been in a positive phase for quite some time, a little bit over 25 years, almost approaching 30 years. And it's expected to continue for the 2022 hurricane season. So sea surface temperatures for the most part should be much warmer than average and should encourage a lot more tropical cyclone development compared to the long-term average. Now, for some people who haven't lived before, let's say the mid nineties to experience a negative Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, it might, there might, this year might not seem um, crazy hyperactive to you relative to the more recent years. However, there are still other factors that I think will not only make this hurricane season a little bit more active, um, act more active than the long term average, but even comparing it to other years where the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation is positive, I think there is a good possibility that this hurricane season will even surpass the more recent average, which ranges between 1991 and 2020. Um, um, so that's certainly something to keep up in mind. But compared to long-term average, we're pretty much inevitably going to experience a more active and usual hurricane season as a result of a positive um, Atlantic multidecadal oscillation. The sea surface temperatures will be a lot warmer than average. You see that during a positive phase, you see pretty much the entirety of the Atlantic is experiencing warmer than average sea surface temperatures. And during a negative phase, you see that sea surface temperatures are definitely cooler than average in a lot of the Atlantic. So it definitely makes a big difference, but this should contribute to a more active than usual hurricane season, especially comparing it to a long-term average. But you might be wondering, how about the short-term average? Will this be a more active than usual hurricane season, even comparing it to the more recent years? Well, we need to take a look at several different factors, such as analog years. And if you don't know what some meaning of analog years, pretty much analog years are years in history that were very similar to this year. And, uh, and based on those years, we could make a pretty, um, a pretty good forecast regarding what will happen, um, this year. So, um, so for this year, for the 2022, um, hurricane season, we're coming off a strong La Nina and we're most likely either going to be in a weak La Nina or maybe a weak neutral phase somewhere in between there. And the two years in recent history that really stand out to me as being very similar are the years of 2001 and the hurricane season of 2012. And to, uh, and to tell you guys what happened in those hurricane seasons of two, during the 2001 hurricane season, um, 17 named storms formed, which is definitely more active than usual, even comparing it to um, relative to the uh, positive multi decadal oscillation. And during the 2012 hurricane season, of course, we saw some pretty powerful hurricanes such as Hurricane Isaac, which pounded New Orleans as a category one hurricane. And of course, a big one was Hurricane Sandy, which was one of the worst tropical cyclones in history. That hurricane season, we had 19 named storms. So both of those years that are very similar to the 2022 hurricane season experienced um, experienced much more tropical cyclone activity than average. So as a result, I think it's um, I think it's safe to say that the 2022 
hurricane season will be above average not only comparing it to a long-term average but the more recent average as well the more um the more modern average based on a positive atlantic multidectal oscillation um so i do expect a more active than usual hurricane season as a result now um another thing we need to take a look at is the climatology models because they are another reliable data point that really shows that really could determine whether or not this hurricane season will be active if we were to take a look at what the cfs model is forecasting when it comes to sea temperatures you see that for the month of may pretty much the entirety of the atlantic is experiencing sea surface temperatures warmer than average especially the extreme northern portion of the atlantic which has been a trend over the past hurricanes um few hurricane season which is very interesting and it has um, and it has created an influx of tropical cyclone, subtropical cyclones developing very far up northward. But even further southward, sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average. And if I were to continue to move forward, you see that in June, sea surf temperatures are still much warmer than average. And what's interesting is that the main the CFS model is expecting the main development region to experience a warming of sea surf temperatures as we head closer into the main months of the hurricane season which is very concerning so just because sea surf temperatures look um right looks looks like it's right around average in the main development region and we do see uh cooler cooler pockets of water just off the west african coast does not mean that will continue for the main part of the hurricane season because you see in august and september the two more active months the sea surf temperatures continue to stay warm throughout the atlantic more and especially closer to western atlantic which makes me think that the western atlantic will be the hot spot when it comes to tropical cyclone development compared to the main development region while i still expect majority of storms to develop in the main development region because that's typically what happens during most hurricane seasons i i do expect the um i do expect the gulf of mexico the caribbean and the western atlantic in general to experience a much higher um much more tropical cyclone development relative to the average compared to the main development region so um as a result of the much warmer than average sea surface temperatures this should encourage more tropical cyclone development and unfortunately that's not the only data point pointing towards a more active than usual hurricane season if we were to take a look at the wind shear anomaly pretty much in the perp in, in the area shaded in purple that's where the wind shear is weaker than average while the area shaded in orange or red that's where the wind shear is stronger than average and look at the the wind um the wind shear anomaly in the upper levels of the atmosphere you see that the there is very light wind shear for the most part throughout the main development region of caribbean and there is a small pocket i noticed where the wind shear is maybe a little bit stronger in the southeast which would definitely be good news especially since it's closer to land it could maybe slow down tropical cyclones if it were to come close to the southeast however it won't completely it won't it by far won't completely offset the fact that most of the atlantic is experiencing wind uh, much lighter wind shear than average so as a result this still should be a much more active than usual hurricane season and this small pocket of stronger than usual wind shear won't change that fact it might um it might slow down tropical cyclones if it were to move to the united states which is definitely the hope but overall generally speaking it won't slow down the amount of tropical cyclones that develop because you still have the main development region in um experiencing wind uh, much lighter wind shear than average as well as the caribbean both prominent spots for where tropical cyclones do develop so as a result, i still do expect much more tropical cyclones to, to, to develop um than average as a result of this lighter than usual wind shear so that's something something to keep in mind as well now taking a look at the current sea surf temperatures you see that the main development region is actually experiencing sea surf temperatures a little bit cooler than average but like i showed you in the previous model run that the sea surf temperatures are expected to rise as we head closer to the hurricane season so don't underestimate this hurricane season just because sea surf temperatures are cooler than average because that's expected to change as we head closer and closer into the hurricane season and taking a look at the western atlantic what well, makes me think that this will be the most hyperactive area 
is just how warm the sea surf temperatures are right now and it's expected to continue to warm um, as we head further into the hurricane season which is definitely a big concern especially um, due to the close proximity it has to land out um, um, instead of the main Devon region where there's of course a decent amount of tropical cyclones that could easily move out to sea that's not really the case where when a tropical cyclone develops in the Gulf of Mexico or even the Caribbean because there's just so much land close in proximity to these warmer than the um this warmer than average ocean water th that it, that you're bound to experience a land falling tropical cyclone if a tropical cyclone were to develop somewhere in the western Atlantic which is definitely a concern and as all well, I do expect this hurricane season to be more active than usual especially more towards the western Atlantic this hurricane season now um taking a look at my new forecast when it comes to hurricane season so in my previous Forecast my I expected 19 name storms 10 hurricanes and five major hurricanes This was based on the fact that it was a little bit more uncertain whether or not we'll experience a neutral phase or a La Nina phase But now since the certainty has risen for a La Nina to occur this hurricane season I also rose the amount of tropical cyclones I'm expecting this hurricane season where I'm expecting right around 21 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and 6 major hurricanes, which when it comes to total storms, that's around 50% um, higher than the, um, than the modern average, and when it comes to hurricane, that's I'm expecting four more hurricanes than the average, and I'm expecting twice as many um, hurricane uh, um, major hurricanes compared to the modern average. So as a result, I definitely do expect a more active than usual hurricane season, and I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't rule out this hurricane season to be hyperactive either. I'm not expecting it right now, but it is borderline. Go, um, it, I am expecting borderline a more hyperactive hurricane season. So it's only something to be aware of if you're right along the coast anywhere um, close to the Atlantic. So make sure to keep that in mind. And in terms of where I'm expecting the more tropical cyclones to develop, like I said, mostly in the Western Atlantic, I'm expecting it where sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average and i expect that to continue that will encourage more of an upward motion in the atmosphere and more convection for more tropical cyclones of form than average and i'm still expecting in a um, above average tropical cyclone formations in the main Devon region because we're in a la nina sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average a positive atlantic multidectal oscillation and of course comparing this year to analog years such as the 20 2001 hurricane season and 2012 hurricane season this should um this should be a more active than usual hurricane season all throughout the atlantic for the most part so make sure to stay safe and remember even if this hurricane season does not necessarily meet your expectations or um just remember that all it takes is one tropical cyclone to completely change the lives of thousands to uh, even millions of people and completely devastate a community so make sure to, uh, be, to not underestimate any sort of tropical cyclone just because this hurricane season might not be as active as you think so, so make sure to stay safe when um, if you're in danger of any tropical cyclone in the future. But anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather -like content. Make sure to like if you like this video. And make sure to follow my social medias down below. And I hope you guys all have a great day.